During the British Grand Prix, the team produced the fastest pit stop, a rapid 2.33 seconds for Lewis Hamilton. I'm joined now by Sporting Director Ron Meadows. So tell me, Ron, how do you define the perfect pit stop? Oh, it's a difficult one to define the perfect pit stop, but it, you know, the, the pit crew need to be in harmony with the driver. The driver needs to come in at the correct speed, he needs to stop on the marks, you know, he needs to have all the settings ready on the steering wheel so that when he launches it doesn't wheel spin or bog down. And obviously once he's stopped, the guys have to connect to the wheel nut as quickly as possible, lift the car in the air at the same time, go back on, rattle the wheel nut back on as, as quick as they can, but not too much because then you can't crack the wheel nut for the next pit stop and obviously the, the jacks need to release as soon as you're finished on the guns. And what kind of time are we talking for the real perfect pit stop? I believe a perfect pit stop, which we've never had. We've come close on a few occasions, but I think the perfect pit stop you'll see people doing sub 1.8 seconds. But that's our, our 2.3 from the weekend. The pit stop was actually two seconds and then you include driver reaction. So we always do ours to green light. And you mentioned drivers. What is the hardest, uh, greatest challenge for a driver during a pit stop? Well, often it's, it's a pit lane entry because obviously you're coming in a great speed. You have to make sure you, you hit the marks and hit, hit the speed limiter as quick as you can, but without losing time and not being locked up. Then you need to make sure you get into the pit box without going too fast because the boys, you know, it's all about hand-eye coordination with the gun. If you, well, a big no-no for us is, is, is locking up too, uh, too early and stopping too early because the boys are trying to follow the nut and they have to go back. So uh, we allow them to go too long, but no more than 20 centimeters. If they hit the marks at the right speed, that you know you should be have you should have a sub 2.3, 2.4 pit stop. If they don't, it can be three, four seconds onwards. Looking to the other side of the pit stop, how does what is the hardest challenge for the pit crew? The, the biggest challenge is obviously making sure all four wheels are tight when, before they release the car. But it, uh, we, we, you know, we practice so often, we'll do 60, 70 pit stops a week when we get opportunity. And at the race, we'll do another 60, 70 from Thursday onwards. So we, we do a lot of juggling around with different people. So we're, we're covered for every position, but we try to not, for instance, if you change the wheel gun man, you try not to take the guy putting on the left rear to replace the wheel gun guy on the front, because now you've got two corners which are messed up. We always try and introduce just the one, one change. Coming off is, is not that difficult once you've connected and then you've got to be going straight back on, but rattling up for probably 0.2 of a second. 0.3, 0.4, you've lost two tenths. Plus, you've made it ultra difficult for the next pit stop because the, as the car drives round, the, the wheel nuts get tighter and tighter because everything expands. And uh, so it means your next stop's going to be slower. And are there any things, other things the driver has to watch out for in that situation? Well, the, the, the driver, it's a really intense time for the driver because obviously he's been racing around more often than not. They, they, you know, they've had a two second gap between the car in front and behind, where now if it's a safety car, for instance, they all come in together. So you've got to find your, your, your pit crew and not go to the wrong one, which has happened on many occasions. And then we, he has to have a belief in the crew that when we release him, we're not going to release him into traffic. And uh, that's a real challenge and that's a high pressure situation, not just with the driver, but also the people controlling the, the, uh, the lollipop and the lights because it's, uh, you've seen many times where they've come out and lost the wing or lost the position and the last thing we want to do is, is leave the box and lose a position. But we will we'll, we'll accept that, you know, because we know on track we can overtake people so we don't want to cause any issues in the pit lane. The drivers have their responsibilities and the pit crew does, but are there any other factors that could affect a pit stop? Well, a lot of it's to do with a grip in the, in the pit lane. For instance, it, uh, for a wet race, we wouldn't lay rubber because often during practice sessions we'll lay rubber to help the, you know, give it more grip when you stop for a wet race. You don't want that because water and rubber don't mix. So it, uh, it, it's, all about, it, it's, it's all about getting traction out of there and, and having a, a, clear, a clear run into the fast lane. We have, we have the pit lane, we have the slow lane, then we have the fast lane. At, at most, most races, but some tracks it's quite a narrow pit lane and they'll reduce the speed limit from 80 to 60. And that's really quite difficult because there's probably only three or four meters from where the hoses end on the gantry to where the pit wall is. And it's, uh, you've got to try and feed another car in alongside them to race. And these cars are 1.8 meters wide each and next year they're going to be two meters. So it's going to be more difficult next year releasing. So over the weekend you had a few double pit stops. We call it a stack scenario, which is uh, when both cars are entering the pits on the same lap. And ideally you'll want at least a six or seven second gap because otherwise the second car is going to lose time, especially if he's got traffic behind him. So it's always, it's always good to get a six or seven, you know, six or seven second gap, ideally a 10 second gap, because 
the rear jack guy has got to lift this car, drop it and get out of the way, otherwise the second car is going to run him over. But it's a scenario we, we practice a lot back at base and it, uh, it worked out perfectly. We were very fortunate that we had the gap between the cars and we didn't lose any places because more often than not, the second car will lose a place and that happened to Ferrari, I believe, because they came in one lap before us. And uh, I think Kimi was the second car and lost, lost some places, but there's not much you can do about it because what, you can't, you're not allowed to slow people down in the pit lane, so you just have to, just have to come in at your normal speed. But uh, yeah, it worked out very well, and all four stops, for, it was uh, well, you know, went just as we practiced it, so that was nice. How are you practicing for next year? Are there any other methods you have to apply? Um, I think next year is going to be a little tougher on the guys because the wheels are bigger and heavier, and obviously the ergonomics of taking the wheel off and putting it on is going to be a new challenge and maybe we'll have to mix some people around because it's probably going to be helpful if you've got long arms. <laughs> and there'll be a bit more weight required. Yeah, probably if the boys go to the gym a lot and I think they'll then have to continue that because the wheels and tyres are going to be three or four kilos heavier each, which for a one-off pit stop in the race is not so bad, but when we do 20 odd stops in a session, you know, it can take, you out, take it out of you and we're fortunate to have a physio who helps us and trainers and things, but you know, it's like you can go to pick a piece of paper off the floor and you can hit your back. But next year is going to be a challenge, a challenge for everyone, and we like challenges in this team.